Hold on on tight tight for the the next next hour. hour. You're entering entering into a place, a zone zone called called the alternative to the alternative alternative media. media. It's a place, a special place, where even truth seekers fear to tread. All right, people, let's move like we've got a purpose. Affirmative. Okay, folks, back for a Monday edition of the Investigative Journal. Greg Anthony here, as always. And, you know, I want to start out talking about a little baseball, Major League Baseball. And I know that doesn't really coincide with the subject matter here, but I always said the Jesuit Vatican New World Order will never end the world when the World Series is on the horizon or the Super Bowl. So if these two organizations keep going, you know what? We may be here for thousands and thousands of more years. So all of you people out there who are preaching this doom and gloom about the end of the world, please, every generation I've ever studied, going back to zero time, says they're the last generation that are going to exist in the world. And it just seems to go on and on and on, doesn't it? Now, we may be able to make our stay here on Earth a little more pleasant, But that's about the best you can hope for, isn't it really? Well, anyway, a little baseball. Baseball history was made this year because there were two ties in the three divisions, out of the three divisions in the National League. Ties to see who's going to get first place in that division. That's never happened before in baseball, whether you're a baseball fan or not. And if you're not a baseball fan, just turn the show off. And I'm telling you something, you're missing out on one of the great, is pastimes in the world. Go to the ball game, buy a hot dog, drink a couple beers, and it'll only cost you about $350 now. When I was a kid, I remember one summer I went to Wrigley Field, the friendly confines in Chicago. I went to, I think, about 30 home games, and they used to cost 75 cents to get in. Yes, and I was too young to drink beer, but boy, I remember having a nice bottle of 7-Up for about a dime. (laughs) Those days are over. Over. Go to Dodger Stadium with your family of four. You better take uh, your checkbook with you. And uh, I always go to Dodger Stadium and say, can I uh, pay on the payment plan? (laughs) It'll cost you a lot of money. But anyway, baseball is a beautiful sport. And uh, I tend to watch it now just on TV and on the comfort of my own living room. It's a lot cheaper. And even though these cable TV stations are a ripoff, uh, it's a little better. But anyway, so we have a real historic thing going on right now. In the American League, which is the um, which is the grandfather of all leagues, uh, the American League, that's all set. So there's going to be a wild card playoff for the top, the, uh, the two teams that didn't win their division that had the best record. And they will then square off, the winner of that will square off with the best team the record of the best team in the American League that's the Boston Red Sox and then the Yanks will take on the um, the winner of the other division and then it goes from the division to the National League or the American League uh, championship game to the World Series but now we're mired in a problem here in the National League two of the three divisions ended up in a tie in the Central the Cubs, who blew it this year, I mean, I've never seen, uh, my Cubbies have won it two years in a row. But this year, their bats were anemic. Let me tell you something. I've never seen a team uh, go hot and cold so much. If they could have just scored three or four runs in a game about four or five times, ten times, they don't want this division going away. But they changed their hitting coach, and I believe he won't be there next year because somebody's got to take the fall, even though it's the players swinging the bats. And the poor manager, uh, he had no choice. I mean, what is he going to do? If you don't hit the ball, you don't score runs, you're not going to win, even though the pitching was great. And they had to play the Brewers, who caught him on the last day of the season in a playoff today. Now, guess what happened? The Cubs lost 3-1. to one. Again, their bats were cold. Three hits. And the Brewers go on to win the National League Central Division. 
They get a few days off. They wait for the winner of the Dodger Rockies series in the West, who ended up in a tie, both with a 91 and 71 record. You're surprised how much I know about baseball, huh? I know more about baseball than I do the Jesuits. But anyway, uh, 91-71. They're now in the, I believe, the bottom of the third, 0-0. Zero, zero. And the loser will go to Chicago because the Cubs had a better record than the Rockies or the Dodgers. And they will square off to see who is the wild card team that gets a chance to play the Milwaukee Brewers, who had the best record in the National League. And boy, the Cubs are chomping at the bit. But they have to get by the loser of the Dodger-Rocky game today. Now the winner, of course, goes uh, right to the National League, uh, wins their division, and waits for the, I believe they had the best record. I'm not sure. Maybe uh, the other division team, well, whatever. They're waiting for, uh, they will play on Thursday. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, you got great baseball coming up. Of course, that's going to take a few weeks. Then you got the World Series, and so we got at least a month or two before the uh, world comes to an end. Yep, the Jesuits will not blow the world up during the World Series. Let me bet on that. And the reason is they're baseball fans, I find out. Yes, they go to a lot of games, and they all have front row seats when they go. That's really weird. I wonder if they pay these people off just like they pay off politicians. Probably. And they, they're they just a lowly priest. They don't have any money. How can they afford $1,000 box seats? That's That's weird. So... We don't have to worry about that. And then I hear that the other side of the Jesuits are football fans. So they'll be following uh, the football schedule all the way up till when? Uh, Super Bowl Sunday in February, 1st of February. So the world won't end till then. But that's the time you got to worry. Between February, when the Super Bowl is over, and when the baseball season starts in April. So if you're worried about the world coming to end or bombs blowing up, it's going to be between February or April. And then there'll be a hiatus in both leagues, and just like they did in World War II. And uh, we'll have to wait and see if America exists after that. If not, they, they make a World Baseball Association, can't they? If there's going to be a one-world order, a one-world government, there's got to be a one-world baseball league. And what, what's the difference? I mean, if you look at the baseball teams here now, most of the, you know, there's more foreign players than American players. We got people from China. We got people from North Korea. We got people from South, no, South Korea, not North Korea yet. Cause Chim, uh, that, that dictator won't let them play baseball there. No. Cause they don't have lights in Korea. And so they can't play baseball. And they don't allow the people there to have grass. So they don't play baseball in North Korea, but the South Korea has some has a couple uh, major leaguers. China, of course, Japan might as well be the Japanese league, and then of course you've got uh, South America and Central America. Man, you got more. Uh, I can name every baseball team, and I'd say half the roster is Hispanics, and that's good. They're great ball players, and another thing they do well are they're good jockeys. If you ever go to the racetrack. You're going to find a lot of Hispanic jockeys because they're smaller and jockeys can't be more than 110 pounds, right? So they got a lot of Hispanic jockeys, got a lot of Hispanic baseball players. They haven't yet uh, really saturated football. Uh, but anyway, uh, there there's a few there as well. So don't worry. Once the world is over, as we know it, it'll be the One World Baseball Association and the uh, where will they be playing? Boy, there's going to be a lot of traveling. No, they're going to have like the China League. Then they'll have the Japan League. They'll, they'll segment it off into four quadrants. North American Baseball League. Then there'll be the Asian. And then they'll play for the World Championship. Well, we call it the World Series now. What is that? How can it be the World Series if it's only the American teams that play? Are we being a bit presumptuous? That we're the world here? Sounds funny. World Series. Okay? Super Bowl. I mean, what's so super about the Super Bowl? You know? I don't think there's anything super about it. First of all, it's got the worst entertainment in the world. Every year they 
bring out Madonna dressed, uh, you know, they're going to roll her out in a wheelchair one day, you know, and she'll be, you know, doing her thing, threatening to blow up the White House, etc. So, I don't know why we call it the World Series if we're only in America now. It should be the USA Series, right? But when they started this whole thing years ago, playing baseball, we were the World Series. Nobody else played. I mean, in Central America, they still were catching baseballs with, uh, you know, milk cartons. And then they would have to, like, get a rock and weave it, put some thread around it, and throw that. That's how it was when baseball started in America. Look at how they've advanced, you know? And we say that the cultures in, in uh, Central and South America are third world. No. They play in our baseball league, their first world. And now the World Series means probably the World Series. Everybody plays from the world, right? We've got people from all over the world. Even Australia has some major league players. And uh, the one group that's taken a hit is the blacks. The black American players are losing ground in baseball. There's not as many. Their percentages are down. But do we hear all these... Uh, you know, people like Cory Booker, a senator, who's always saying there's racism in America. I don't hear him say it about baseball. But could we consider it racism because there aren't as many black players now? No. The reason is they're not as good as the Hispanic players. It's that simple. Or the white players. And some white players are better than Hispanic players. And some Hispanics are better than blacks. And there's some blacks who are better than both whites and Hispanics. So it's the merit system in baseball. What can you do for me today? Not like uh, when you want to get a job now or if you want to go to school. I'd want to be a black woman. If I had to come back as something else and I wanted a really great job, I'd want to be a black woman because they have to hire me. You know, under these stupid guidelines of racial equality, which means the merit system is out the window. So who's being discriminated against? White, white men. Yeah, of course. I'm going to start a movement. Yes. White men for equality in America. But anyway, I digress to a point where it gets a bit annoying to listen to my own voice. So I wanted to start out by playing ISIS, CIA, and the Vatican Connection. Of course, I'm going to use Bill Hughes to do it because he's a sane man, and he's in a sane position to do it. He's written two books called The Secret Terrorists, and The Enemy Unmasked, which I've read, they're very small books. That's the only reason I read them. It's only They're very tiny, like 30 pages each. I can handle that. Anything over 100, I do not even take out of the bookstore. I look at it and I size it up. I said, if I can fit it between my little finger, and if I can fit it, if it's more than a one inch big, I will not read the book. Too long. I've got better things to do. So I like Bill Hughes' books. They're very tiny. But filled with a lot of good things. So let me turn on Bill before you turn me off, or I turn myself off. Here's Bill Hughes. Sure, Danny. Number one, Danny, it's great to be here with you. Thank you. Uh, just just loving it. Uh, the two books I wrote, Danny, one was The Secret Terrorist, the other one is The Enemy Unmasked. Uh, currently, Danny, in print, there's about... Five Bill, why are you calling me Danny? <laughs> He's doing another interview. Five million. And uh, they're in about six, six to eight different languages. So I just praise God, Danny, that uh, for the opportunity to have written them. You know, Bill, we do have something in common because as I have read your books, I see that there's an enemy that you're unmasking in there. And I've written a couple books as well. Uh, many of you out there may be familiar with the books that I've penned. And the first is. The Virgin Mary Debtor Alive. It's The Virgin Mary Debtor Alive. This book is about three million that have been printed in seven different languages, even Arabic. Awesome. <laughs> and so they've gone all over the world as well. And the yeah. second one that I wrote is called The Final Inquisition. If you look closely at the cover of this book, it's unmasking an enemy that I believe is working through a religious guise. <laughs> And we're going to get more to this as we have this discussion today. But Bill, we've come together here today because there's great problems in the United States of America and France. We've seen ISIS, the radical Islam, 
you know, radical Muslims that are murdering, killing, beheading people. This is a group of assassinations that we've never seen before. Uh, my family's alarmed. You know, people are worried that if you can't even go to a Christmas party without the fear of 14 people being murdered and assassinated right here in our state in California, in San Bernardino. You know, Bill, I want to talk about this. I mean, terror's here in America now, and, and I think this video needs to be made. People need to know the truth. Well, Danny, let me tell you, the, um, there's, there's so much talk about terror, and of course, because of what happened in San Bernardino, everybody's just on edge. But Danny, what, what I know you and I want to look at today is, is that there's, this is all a smoke screen. This is a front, and the world is uniting together, Danny, to oppose what appears to be a common enemy. Good point. Let's have a prayer, and let's read a scripture in the Bible before we begin. Father in heaven, I just ask for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon Bill and me. Uh, Lord, we need your power. We need your strength. We want to glorify you in this video here. So, Father, just bless us now, and we just pray that heaven will be glorified in what we do. Use our minds, our lips, our Father, the information that we have accumulated and and help us, Lord, in presenting this in a way that others will understand the hour in which we are living. Amen. So bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, the Bible says we have a, I love this more sure word of prophecy, where unto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shines in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Lord has given us prophecy. We have the great book of Daniel and the Revelation that exposes, I believe, powers and how the devil himself is working through the kings of the earth, through false religious powers and, and in ways that we don't even expect. So, so, Bill, let's talk today. Let's spend our time now getting to this very heart of the matter that you just said, that there's a common... There's, a, there's an enemy out there that wants us to think there's a common villain to bring the powers of the earth together as a, a new world order, a one world order. And we see the religious community also pressing together because this villain is killing Christians. I remember in Roseburg, Oregon, where they had this, this uprising where a militant came in with his rifle and, and was asking the people... What's your religion? What's your religion? Asking if they were Muslim or whether they were Christians, and if they answered they were Christians, they were shot. Bill, we need to talk about this now. As, as we look at these, this picture up here of terror in America, what's going on, Bill? Danny, it's very clear in Bible prophecy that there is an enemy. The Bible, of course, uh, and, and we're all familiar with it, they call it the Antichrist. Right. Well, Danny, in Revelation chapter 17, we are introduced to a power that the Bible clearly portrays, Danny, that is behind the, the leaders of the world, the churches of the world, the merchants of the world, and is actually fomenting, Danny, crisis, terror, and war to regain control of the entire world. So you're making it sound like, according to Bible prophecy, that there is an agenda and there's a power behind the agenda and behind that power is Satan himself. Absolutely, Danny. Absolutely. And Danny, I think it, it comes so clear in Revelation 17. Because you have, Danny, in Revelation 17, verse 1, at the end of the verse, it says, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. So, Danny, we have this impure woman, 
the, of whom the Bible says in Isaiah 1, in Jeremiah chapter 3, in Ezekiel chapter 16. Danny, whenever a church went into apostasy, it was referred to as a whore or an impure woman. So we have here, Danny, in Revelation 17, an apostate church. Now the Bible, and Danny, all of the great reformers, they didn't agree on a lot of things. But one thing they did agree on was who the great whore was. Now we're talking about Martin Luther. We're talking about John Calvin. We're talking about Ulrich Zwingli, William Tyndale. Danny, we are talking about the great reformers throughout Europe, and they all agreed on who the great whore was in Revelation chapter 7. You know, Bill, you said that, that a woman depicts, as it were, an apostate church. That it, it refers to a church in apostasy. And I just wanted to share verse 6, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints. Okay, <laughs> It's not a good woman. No, no. She's killing the saints. She's killing God's people. Absolutely. You know, Danny, in Revelation 18, verse 24, it even takes it further, and it connects, Danny, with our slide up here about terror in America. Verse 24, Revelation 18 says, And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Now, Danny, something went on in San Bernardino last week. Amen. Something went on in Paris a few weeks ago. And, Danny, we see there's organization to these mass killings. So, Revelation 17 and 18, Danny, says that this apostate church is involved in mass killing, in terror, in war, to create a world, Danny, where they can regain their lost power. That's an excellent point you're making right now. So this would imply to me that the ISIS, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and other terrorist groups can be the part of the ploy of this apostate woman. Absolutely, Danny. And we're going to see very clearly, Danny, as we unfold this, this interview, that ISIS, Al-Qaeda, had their origin, Danny. They were created back several decades ago. They were created by this apostate church in Revelation 17. So I would encourage, Danny, our, our viewers to just stay with us because we're going to see clearly that ISIS and Al-Qaeda, Danny, they were created by this great whore. Let's do it. Okay. Okay, we're going to do that in the uh, second half hour here, continue. And uh, I'd like to also say that I've drawn many, many connections between the Jesuits and the creation of ISIS. Not only the creation of it, but also the, uh, the manipulation of it, the... Uh, continuation of it, also helping to fund ISIS as well as organize things so that this war on terror could continue. And there's always going to be an enemy, correct? And the enemy right now is the huge world terror problem that is stripping away your rights in order for, like he was saying, this apostate church as well as their secular uh, politicians and countries uh, working with them to create this one world order where we're all slaves and they're basically the owners or the captains of the ship and that's one ship you don't want to be sailing on because for you it may be the last voyage you ever take. You're listening to uh, Greg Anthony on the investigative journal. I'm playing an interview done by Danny Vieira and Bill Hughes. Bill was on my show many, many times over the years. And we'll be back in three minutes on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. The book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. 
In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy Reality News app. Get it now. Visit CrossTheBorder.org, C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built. That's CrossTheBorder.org. When it comes to prophecy today, much of the evangelical Christian world has their eyes on Israel, waiting and watching to see when the Third Temple will begin to be built. The plans are drawn, the Jewish people are eager, most evangelical Christians today believe that the rapture will happen before the Third Temple is built. Hi, I'm Michael Eugene. I was taught that Daniel's 70th week was in the future. Is that really what the Bible teaches? Have we searched the scriptures and found this to be true? Why is it so important for a reestablished Israel to build a Third Temple in Jerusalem? Is it necessary to build a temple on the same location already occupied by the Dome of the Rock? Is it necessary for sacrifices to take place in the temple on Temple Mount? Is there really a rapture followed by seven years of tribulation? What is the New Testament temple? Can we identify history and prophecy? Who is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13? Who are the seven kings in Revelation 17? I have asked all these questions and I have found Nicholas Arthur's new book, When the Third Temple is Built, answers all these questions and more using scripture to interpret scripture. The Bible says that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Nicholas shows us in his new book, When the Third Temple is Built, how the Bible interprets prophecy and not man's private interpretation. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of Nicholas Arthur's new book titled, When the Third Temple is Built, that's crossTheBorder.org. The following program is labeled dangerous and off limits by the supreme Jesuit command. But stay on the people. Listen up, and you may just learn something. Dear Lord Jesus, this ain't happening, man. This can't be happening, man. This ain't happening. Okay, back boys and girls for the second half hour. I can't wait to get back to ISIS, the CIA, and the Vatican connection, and to see exactly what Bill has to say. I don't know about you. I could talk all afternoon, as you know, but I know that you want to listen to this. So let me make way for Bill Hughes. Hey, Bill, let's, let, let's do it. Let's go. Revelation 17, Danny, verse 2, it says that this apostate church is connected to the kings of the earth. And the kings of the earth, Danny, as we see on the slide, we're talking about the movers and shakers in political affairs in our world. You've got on our slide, you've got John Boehner there, the Speaker of the House. You've got Joseph Biden, the Vice President of the United States, listening with intensity their boss. This is an open session of Congress, and the first time the Pope of Rome has ever addressed Congress in session, correct? Absolutely. So this is unprecedented. Absolutely it was, Danny. And that, of course, took place a little over two months ago. Danny, the Bible says that the kings of the earth have committed fornication with this apostate church. Verse 18 of the same chapter, Danny, goes one step further. Revelation 17, 18 says, The woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So it's not just the United States we're seeing here, Bill, on these slides. Comment on this. What, what, what are you seeing here with these kings of the earth? These are world leaders. Absolutely, Danny. Danny, Revelation 17, 18, in light of what Peter said in our opening uh, verse, we have a sure word of prophecy that shines as a light in a dark place. 
So, Danny, it's only through Bible prophecy that we can get an accurate view of world events. Because, Danny, world events would tell us that the movers and shakers are the presidents and leaders of our world. But Revelation 17 rips the mask off, Danny, and says, no, the rulers of the world are being controlled and told what to do by that's a, this apostate that's church. A very, repeat that. That's a very important point. Danny, the leaders of our world are told what to do by this apostate church. Now, can you prove that today? There is so, so much proof that all the leaders of the world do the bidding of this apostate church. You know, if we look at a few slides here, we see Pope Francis. Uh, sometimes I refer to him as the Sister Teresa of the Papacy. Mm. This man who appears very kind and washing the feet of people, you know, as he's out there in the crowds and moving throughout the earth, taking his time to hold the little babies in his arm, showing how benevolent he is, taking the name from Francis of Assisi. He's chumming up, you know, with these world leaders here, and, and even with religious people. Absolutely, Danny. Absolutely. Danny, the fact, the fact of the matter is, and, and of course, the apostate church that we're looking at it here in Revelation 17, of whom all the reformers agree, is the Roman Catholic Church. And all the reformers declared that truth. Tragically, Danny, Protestants today, apostate Protestants, evangelicals, in fact, every religious group, Danny, every church in the world today, refuses to declare who Babylon the Great is in Revelation 17. It's like it. the Reformers had it right, but today it's like people are oblivious that that was even history. They, 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 they're, they're offended when you speak this way to tie the Pope of Rome at all to the Antichrist. Well, Danny, it's fascinating, you know. In fact, I was reading that in your book just this afternoon. Danny, you had two Jesuit priests who came along toward the end of the 16th century. And Danny, Rome was desperate to get the attention of the religious world off of them as the Antichrist power. So along came two Jesuit priests who, in fact, the Jesuit order, Danny, itself was raised up to destroy the Protestant Reformation and to reestablish the power of the papacy. So, Danny, these two Jesuit priests come along, um, Alcazar and Ribera, and they point all churches in two opposite directions. Yes. Where they said all prophecy was either fulfilled in the, by the first century, or the futurist view said all prophecy will be fulfilled in the future. Thereby putting the Antichrist into the future Absolutely. and getting the eyes off Rome that he already doth exist. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Danny, we see how effectively those two Jesuits, Alcazar and Ribera, how effectively and how much those ideas have infiltrated into the churches of today. So, Absolutely. Uh, but Danny, Revelation 17 is crystal clear that the papacy, the great whore, reigns over the kings of the earth. As we saw in the slides, they control Barack Obama. He's a king of the earth, Danny. He's probably the most powerful king on the earth. The Bible says that the papacy tells Barack Obama hmm. what to do. In fact, Danny, in your book, The Final Inquisition. Notice this, uh, a very unknown fact about the administration of Barack Obama. On page 72 of your book, you say, yes, President Barack Obama is absolutely right. Change is coming, especially when we consider that many of his appointees are Jesuit trained. Mm -hmm. For example, his chief speechwriter, John Favre, 
Jesuit train. His senior military and foreign policy advisor, J. Scott Gratian, Jesuit train. His deputy communications director, Dan Pfeiffer, Jesuit train. His Chicago mentor, Gregory Galuzzo, a former Jesuit priest, mm. Jesuit train. Mm. Danny, Leon Panetta, mm. the original mm. man who ran the CIA mm. that we're going to look at here momentarily, Jesuit train. So, Danny, we see just with the current president the incredible influence that is brought to bear on this king of the earth, as Revelation 17 clearly outlines. The language that the Bible uses, too, that they have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. This is an illicit relationship between religious, a religious leader and world leaders. I mean, many people suspect uh, the President of the United States with his, his, his sympathies to the Muslim people. Mm. You know, that you don't hear him defending the Christians. It's more time, even on, I watched his his speech last night at the Oval Office talking about these recent, you know, killings in San Bernardino. I, I heard him talking about our outlook towards Muslims. You know, I have Muslims that are friends. I got that. And they say that this ISIS is manufactured. Danny, the Muslims are telling me that don't agree with ISIS by any means and said this is not the way we believe, that this is manufactured. And I was sitting in a sauna one day, and I was speaking to a man, and he went to the University of Jerusalem. He went to school there. He learned Arabic, and, and we were talking, and he says, it's manufactured. And, and I said, do you think it's connected to the Vatican at all? And you know what? We had quite a conversation, Bill. Mm. We had a, quite a conversation, and I want you to continue, because I am anxious to hear what you have to say in regards to CIA, ISIS, and the Vatican. And is there a link between these three? Danny, we'll definitely get there. Uh, we'll definitely show the connection between ISIS, the CIA, and the papacy. Yes. No doubt about it. But you know, Danny, Revelation 17 and 18 brings out very clearly that not only does the papacy control the kings of the earth, <laughs> But Revelation 17, 5, Danny says that Babylon the Great, this woman, has on her forehead that name, and she's the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So, Danny, if Rome is the great whore, mm -hmm. then the churches that are following in her footsteps today right. are her harlot daughters. Right. And I know who you're referring to, apostate Protestantism. Absolutely. Is Danny. there any indication that apostate Protestantism is joining once again with the Roman power. And, and one of the things that I want to bring to light here is that Joe Olstein, you know, this year he met with the Pope, or this 2014, correct? Yes. He met with the Pope Francis at the Vatican, and it always amazed me because here's this Protestant evangelical, you know, well-known on the America and packs 50,000 people a week into his stadium for his worship service, right. travels to Rome and meets with the man of sin who has a hundred thousand people in St. Peter's Basilica and they sit there and they begin to talk how they can converge and work as one. Well. Absolutely, Danny. You know, Danny, we've seen Joel Osteen do it. Of course, we had the episode with Kenneth Copeland and Tony Palmer. So, yes. Danny, we, we see the Pentecostal, the Evangelical, the apostate Protestant churches of today, they are uniting together with Rome, with an agenda, Danny, yes. to usher in a one-world church, one-world religion that will bring all the world into corrupt religious unity with the Vatican. And so God has a people on this earth 
that he has given a message. I always say in Revelation 14 to meet the crisis in Revelation 13, where all the world's wondering after the beast. God has his people in position that are to a sound the most solemn message ever entrusted to mortal man, and that's the three angels' messages of Amen. Revelation 14, to expose this power. What we are doing today is in line with the Bible. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are to unmask this power. So as we look at this terror that's coming here in America now, I want to move on now because this hour is going to go fast, but I want you to talk about this. This is amazing. CIA contractor, we fabricated ISIS. This is a completely fabricated enemy. The funding is completely from the United States and its allies. And for people to think that this enemy is something that needs to be attacked in Syria or Iraq is a farce, because obviously this is something that we created, a contractor, Stephen Kelly, and then below it, it says, suspicions run deep in Iraq that CIA and ISIS are united. The New York Times, September 20th, 2014. And here's the article. Yes, yes. It's not, it's conspiracy theorists. You know, I always laugh at that, and so do you. It, Revelation, chapter 13, Revelation 17. The Bible's filled with exposing and addressing the fact that there is a conspiracy. Absolutely, Danny. You know, Danny, Webster's Dictionary says that a conspiracy is two or more people or groups united together with a sinister purpose. Now, Danny, we've looked in Revelation 17. We've got the great whore, the papal power. We have the kings of the earth. Danny, that's a conspiracy right, right there. there. Revelation 17, 5, you've got the mother of harlots. Yes. That's three powers now, Danny, in Revelation 17 united together for a sinister purpose. And then, of course, Revelation 18, verse 3, and, and verses 15 to 18, identifies a fourth entity, and those are the merchants of the earth, mm -hmm. the great bankers, the great business people of the world. So, Danny, for somebody to say that conspiracy is a theory, mm. Danny, they're dead wrong. Conspiracy is not a theory, friend. It's a fact. And Revelation 17 and 18 says so. Now, Danny, these, this article that you're showing from the New York Times, connecting the CIA and ISIS, mm. Danny, I want to take it one step closer to home because, Danny, in, in our look at Revelation 17, we are saying to our viewers we're not pointing to ISIS as the great enemy of mankind. Mm -hmm. We are saying that it's the papacy that is the great enemy of every person on this planet. Mm -hmm. And Danny, we are also saying here today, and we're going to see that right now, that the CIA, number one, was a creation of the Vatican. And number two... Mm -hmm that ISIS was a creation of the CIA. That's amazing. Now, Danny, let, let's go back. Let's go back. Number one, Danny, the CIA originated in the 1940s. The CIA originally was called the OSS, the Office of Strategic Services. It was started, Danny, by a man named Wild Bill Donovan. Donovan, Danny, was a knight of Malta. Now, Danny, a knight of Malta is somebody who has surrendered their life to the authority of the Pope, and they have said they will do whatever the Pope desires. Danny, Bill Donovan was such a man. He was given the cross of St. Sylvester right about 1944 by Pope Pius XII. And Pope Pius XII said, Bill, you are to use the OSS, which then spawned into the CIA. He said, you are to use this organization to stop the spread of communism throughout the world. Okay? So that's what Donovan did. Well, Danny... 
not only did Donovan create the Central Intelligence Agency, which I, Danny, call the Catholic Intelligence mm. Agency. The reason why Donovan was a Catholic, Alan Dulles, the first director of the CIA, he was a member of the CFR, which is a front for the Catholic Church. James Angleton, another devout Catholic. Paul Helliwell, another Roman Catholic. Danny, the creators of the CIA were all Roman Catholics. And Danny, the major people, the, the largest group of people that man the CIA were trained at Boston College, Fordham, Georgetown, the preeminent Catholic Jesuit universities in the northeastern part of America, Danny. Those are the predominant men that are involved in the Central Intelligence Agency. You said, I asked you the question, that, that any country wants to have intelligence. They want to know what's going on to protect themselves. And you made the comment, that's why we had the FBI. So the CIA, it looks like it's the United States protecting us. But that's not the case. Danny, the Central Intelligence Agency is much like the Federal Reserve Bank that was created in our modern times about a hundred years ago during the time of Woodrow Wilson. Danny, the Federal Reserve Bank is, is not a United States entity. Danny, it was funded by the Rothschild family who worked for the Jesuit order. It is not an, a, a U.S. entity. It's not part of the federal government in any way. It's not a part of the federal government at all. In fact, Danny, as you trace the history of the Federal Reserve System through American history, it has only created depressions, inflation, raised taxes in the last hundred years. Danny, and it is because of the Federal Reserve System today that America is the greatest debtor nation on the face of the earth. That's why. So, but Danny, getting back, getting back to the CIA, <laughs> at the end of World War II, Danny, the Russians, they were trying to spread the world with communism. In fact, Danny, before World War II, we always called Russia, Russia. But after that, at the end of World War II, their name was changed and it became the USSR, meaning the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Danny, Russia, the USSR, they went all over the world spreading communism. Well, the Catholic Intelligence Agency was raised up to stop communism. That's what it was raised up for, Danny. And in this book, Operation Gladio, written by a devout Roman Catholic, Paul Williams, and we'll see a slide on this a little uh, in a little while. But Danny, he shows that the Catholic Intelligence Agency fed, housed, armed, equipped people all over Europe so that if the Soviet Union came in and tried to take it over for communism, all of these people that the Catholic Intelligence Agency had trained, they would be ready to oppose the communist invasion. Hmm. Well, Danny, you come down to the 1970s, the late 1970s. There was a pro-Western leader that was put in place in Afghanistan. His name was uh, Abdullah Aziz. Danny, the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. A fact of history, late 1979 into 1980. Well, Danny, the Catholic Intelligence Agency had to train Muslims. And so, Danny, 
there were hundreds mm -hmm. of terrorist organizations that were created in the early 1980s by the Catholic Intelligence Agency to fight the Russians in Afghanistan. Now, Danny, one of the groups that was created by the Catholic Intelligence Agency was called Al-Qaeda. Mm. We've heard that name before. <laughs> Danny, we've heard that name for a long, long time yes. now. And Danny, one of the offshoot groups that splintered off from Al-Qaeda was ISIS. Right. Danny, Al-Qaeda was created, funded, uh, armed, housed, fed by the Catholic Intelligence Agency. ISIS, Danny, mm -hmm. same thing. You know, I just sent out in my Elijah prophecy this week, it was ISIS and gun control. Mm -hmm. So we got a common villain out there now, right? And it's bringing people together. And I, I showed in the Elijah Prophecy, I gave a link to this article in the New York you know, Times, but I also gave a link to the origin of ISIS, and they were saying exactly what you're saying. But what amazed me so much, Bill, as I was watching the origin of ISIS, was that as we left Iraq, there was millions of dollars of military vehicles, weapons, and ISIS went in and has taken over these these insurgents that we were. Yeah, we uh, basically, I have to cut it off there, so we only have five seconds. Uh, we funded ISIS, by plain and simple. Back tomorrow on the Investigative Journal. The Book of Revelation says, The spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. This is at the very heart of FirstAmendmentRadio.com. In that spirit, we have created the Prophecy Reality News app for all of your mobile devices. Streaming First Amendment Radio 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Available for your Apple, Android device, and smartphone absolutely free. Get the Prophecy Reality News app installed today so you can listen to First Amendment Radio wherever you are. The Prophecy since the beginning of time, kings have sought it, nations have fought for it, it has been traded, it has been borrowed, it has been purchased, it has been stolen, there's a reason for it. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and to our posterity, invest with the security of gold and silver. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188 or visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net. Listen to Financial Survival with your host, Melody Cedarstrom, right here on FirstAmendmentRadio.com at 4 p.m. Eastern or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. Visit DiscountGoldAndSilverTrading.net or call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, 1-800-375-4188.